it to Tim Tebow to remind us of just how deep-seated the NCAA propaganda is with some individuals. So, because I feel like I need to point out that I feel like the vast majority of people, and based off of the reactions that I saw this week, I feel confident in that, the vast majority of people, college fans, sports fans, just people in general, think that Tim Tebow is absolutely ass wrong for what he said about athletes shouldn't be able to make money off of their likeness, shouldn't be able to get paid because it ruins college athletics. And he wouldn't have wanted to get paid and all this other crap. You know, sure, everybody's entitled to their opinion and differing opinions are fine. But that doesn't mean that an opinion can go unchallenged. It doesn't mean that an opinion can't be called out as wrong, especially if it's built on some very flawed premises. You know, for example, if you think about something that a person might have an opinion on. The current healthcare system in the United States is perfect. Regardless of your political, ideological base, would anybody agree with that opinion? Hell to the no! You might have different opinions as to what is truly wrong. You might have different opinions as to what the problems are. You might have different opinions on what the fixes or the solutions are. But does anybody really think outside of potentially pharmaceutical companies, outside of insurance companies, outside of hospitals, think that the current U.S. healthcare system is okie dokie? I don't think so! So if somebody said that opinion, sure it could be their opinion, but they deserve to be bashed for it. Because by no measurement is it perfect, regardless of your political or ideological beliefs. But what really frustrated me about it as much as anything else, first off, wasn't so much just that Tim Tebow opened mouth and inserted foot. It's the fact that people were defending him because he was passionate about a topic. What a dumbass defense for somebody's stupid opinion. He was passionate about it. And I gotta respect it. I ain't gotta respect shit. Do you respect a mass shooter? Because clearly they attack their crimes with a fervor and a passion. Hell no you don't. Oh, that rapist, man, he was really passionate about getting that girl from behind in her butt repeatedly after he roopied her. No, we don't say that. So if there is anybody that is saying his passion should be respected and commended, no, the hell it shouldn't. That is dumb. And I find it really ironic that Tim Tebow, of all damn people, is talking about college athletes shouldn't be able to capitalize off of their likeness and make money off of their likeness. When this asshole has literally been getting opportunities now for almost a decade based off of his college freaking likeness. You might say, well that wasn't during his college career. You know what the hell I mean. Because he most certainly isn't making his reputation off of being an incredible bust of a first round pick of a quarterback. He's making it off of his time in Florida because he's a fucking Bible thumper and you know damn good and well it's true. Do you really think the Mets would have given him an opportunity in the organization if he wasn't Tebow? Which again, comes in large part based off of his college likeness. Do you think he would have gotten hot-shotted to the top in ESPN when talking about college football if not for his college likeness? So what a hypocritical piece of crap Tim Tebow proves himself to be by saying it's wrong for athletes to sit there and capitalize on their likeness while they're in college when all the while Tim Tebow has made his entire post-college career off of his damn college likeness. And this whole element about amateur nature in this particular case, it ruins what college sports and college football should be about. But does anybody believe that crap? Does anybody believe that naive NCA propaganda driven bull? The school 
schools make millions upon millions upon millions of dollars because of marquee sports like college football. The coaches make millions of dollars for being college football coaches over these amateurs. Never mind the fact that they could sit there and leave before the end of the season to go take a higher paying job somewhere else. But God forbid a kid decides he wants to go to a different school or wants to play in a different system for a different coach. Good luck getting your ass to another school and getting the transfer approved. Like, why would anybody sit there and think that? The sanctity, the purity of college sports. Give me an effing break. What the NCAA is doing is borderline criminal. They use college players' likenesses to profit significantly and basically trickle very little to nothing down to the athletes. And before you sit there and hit me with the lame-ass crap about, oh, they get a scholarship and they get free room and board. And do, 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 do. You realize a lot of these D1 athletes can't work, right? You realize in the case, especially these football players, they're six foot five, 250, 300 pounds. They're not just going to be able to make it on damn ramen noodles and hot dogs three times a day, idiots! So they can't make money off of their likeness all the while the school and the NCAA is able to. But they also can't go out there and work a job like other college students can. What is so hard to understand here? And before you hit me with the, oh, they get the free tuition and this and that crap, Let's use Tua down at Alabama as a perfect freaking example of this. You know his school, the NCAA, put the number of his jersey out there for sale. They won't put his name on the back, obviously, because they won't sit there and actually admit to using his likeness. But everybody knows damn good and well what number, what player that is. They will make money off of all the jerseys that they sell, and Tua will get bump kiss. Not to mention the ratings that are generated from a game that Tua plays in and that his other teammates, his school Alabama, plays in, and they get bupkis. When you think about it, you're basically saying a Tua gets maybe 40000 a year between tuition and books. I'm lowballing it maybe a little, but not that much. But he is responsible for millions of dollars of revenue generated. For these people that think that there isn't an issue with this or there isn't a problem with this, why don't you utilize this sliding up your ass pay scale with your jobs and see how much you like it? Imagine if you were in a sales environment and you generated, let's say, $5 million of revenue for your company and your reward was $40,000 in commission for a year. You know what you would do? You would piss and moan and bitch and complain and you would go probably quit and find another damn job because you know you were getting ripped the hell off. There's absolutely nothing fundamentally wrong with these players trying to capitalize on their likeness. If the school could capitalize, if the NCAA can capitalize, if the conferences can capitalize on their likenesses and make money off of them, why the hell should the players be able to? I don't see why so many people get so buffered about this very fundamental basic premise. They use your likeness, they should have to pay you. And again, the scholarship and books argument, the room and board argument is crap. It is crap. It is absolute crap. And anybody that defends it is crap. Tim Tebow is crap. It's a lot easier for Tebow to talk about he wouldn't have wanted the money off of his likeness it's because he didn't need the damn money. Living on his freaking family farm, they weren't hurting for damn money. He didn't need the school to give him damn money. Give me a damn break here. And if we want to talk about BS, how about the fact, correct me if I'm wrong here, but wasn't Tebow freaking homeschooled? Why the hell was he allowed to play high school football anywhere? No, screw you, a-hole. If you didn't go to the school, you shouldn't get to play for the school, period. So he can sit there and bend the rules and do crap. But his entitled ass, whose experience 
in no way, shape, or form represents the majority of players in the NCAA. He represents a minority of players. A player whose family could afford to probably have sent him to school if he did not have a scholarship. A guy whose family could afford to give him living expenses and meal money and so on and so forth. So he didn't have to sit there and do all these other things. A lot of these players, black and definitely white as well, aren't necessarily in that same situation. It goes just beyond race to socioeconomic factors here. And to sit there and assert that that's the way it should be just shows how oblivious you are to the real world and how much you're stuck in your own privilege and your entitlement here. And it's not even just a white privilege or a white entitlement here. It is just privilege and entitlement. When you grow up unaware of struggle, you have no basic concept of struggle. So you come at it from a selfish point of view, which does not in any way, shape, or form match the reality of the vast majority of players in college football, especially at the highest level today. Just because you didn't need meal money, a-hole, doesn't mean that a lot of these kids aren't sitting there starving. Their families can't afford to send them money. And all the while, they can't go out there and get damn jobs to make money the damn sales. A guy making money still to this day off of his college freaking likeness who has gotten hot-shotted into opportunities he didn't earn and frankly doesn't freaking deserve because of his college likeness will now sit there on his hypocritical pedestal and talk about how college athletes shouldn't get paid and shouldn't make money off of their damn likeness. The hell is wrong with this world? The hell is wrong with people like Tim Tebow? And what the hell is wrong with anybody, and I mean anybody, that agrees with this farcical asshole in this instance? 